<laughs> yeah. It's, it's just me. My brother told me in order to entertain, to really pop off on this platform, I have to bring something entertainment-wise that other people don't bring. Hence, my, my bod. Take that however you want. Not my bod, but what I said about my bod. You get it. You get it. Dust off your history books, folks, because way back in the year of 2023, I know it's hard to think back that far, uh, we got March of the Machines, and with March of the Machines, uh, we got Rashmi and Ragavan, which is obviously the deck we're going to be talking about today, and easily the most fun I've had playing Magic in a really long time. Tamir has never been my favorite color combo. It's now my favorite color combo. Funny how... Uh, Experiences work, you know? If you don't know what this she Simeon does, allow me to explain it to you. She's one, a green, red, and a blue. May not be in that order. It's probably more than definitely not in that order. She's a 2-4, but uh, <laughs> that's not where it stops. Believe it or not, I'm not just running a 2-4. I know it's shocking. When we play our second spell, we get to exile the top card off of target opponent's library. And then if that spell's CMC is less than the amount of artifacts we control, we may cast it. If it's not, we can cast it normally. Now this sultry simic scientist and this mana manipulating monkey are gonna make your commander gameplay magnificent. I killed that, dude. If you want a fun deck to play that kind of steals other people's stuff, is also pretty strong, and always has a solid board state, uh, you know, let's get into it. There's gonna be timestamps on the timeline down below, so if you wanna skip certain stuff, I don't blame you. Let's get into it. Getting into the basics on this deck. They're basic, but there's some stuff to keep in mind. Starting off with Mana Ramp, it's really important to keep in mind that if your Mana Ramp can come from an artifact source, that also doubles in helping Rashmi get her trigger off more consistently. So, Mana Rocks, like Mind Stone, Wayfarer's Bobble, Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, those are all very good in here. You'll also notice that a lot of the Mana Ramp in this deck that aren't Mana Rocks just make artifacts. We've got like Galag Readers and Gilded Goose and some other G words that make tokens. Relic of Legends, Coalition Relic, you got all the classics. Uh, there's a couple stragglers in the mana ramp category that I guess I can talk about. There's Cursed Mirror, which is just a straight up mana rock. It copies something. It gives that thing, it gives that thing haste. It keeps being a mana rock afterwards. It's an artifact. Case of the Locked Hot House is another one that I've been running in a lot of my decks. It seems weird in this one, but it actually works. Um, it, it lets you play an additional land on your turn. It's solved if you have seven or more lands, which is like very easy to do in Commander. And then once it's solved, you get to play enchantments, creatures, and lands off the top of your deck. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, your deck's about artifacts. That's like the one thing you can't play. Uh, most of my artifacts come from creatures, so it actually plays really well in the deck. And then the last specific note that I want to hit on Mana Ramp is Crime Novelist. New card. It does ramp, but it also like can take over a game by becoming huge, giving you tons of combo mana. Um, I don't really have any combos, but still, you can threaten it, dump it into a ton of bombs. Uh, this thing's just a win con, but it's also Mana Ramp. I figured I'd bring it up here. All of our treasures, all of our clues, everything we crack turns into a red man floating. And our little guy getting bigger, dude. His book's popping off. He's on Oprah's book list. Uh, you know, I think he's doing good. Removal in this deck's like super straightforward. I really don't even want to spend that much time on it. There's like one or two cards I really want to dive into. Here's a list of all the removal that's in the deck. Uh, the specifics that I want to talk about though are Memory Lapse and Horned Lock Whale. Uh, they're both counter spells, uh, but it puts the spell back on the top of its owner's deck. So in Rashmi, we can counter something that we really, really want. Moving on to card draw on this deck. Uh, I normally don't brag much, but the card draw on this deck, uh, it's pretty okay. It's pretty good. We got the classics. We got Ristic Study. We got Lorien Revealed. We've got Guardian Project. We be popping off. Uh, they do really well, obviously, but it gets spicier. All right. If you don't like the Caliente, if your Scoville capacitor is all out of whack, you might want to just back out. You know what I mean? Deduce just rocks, dude. Sounds like gibberish. Maybe. A two drop that lets you draw a card at instant speed and then create a clue token. You're getting a potential two draws out of it, and you're getting an artifact on the board with Rashmi, and it's instant speed. Uh, this thing's just like great. Professional Facebreaker. Uh, Could have probably gone in the mana ramp section, but I end up using it more for its card draw. Uh, as like every time we attack someone and deal damage, we get treasures, and we can sack treasures to impulse draw with her. Paired with Rashmi, you know, you can see how it gets kind of out of hand. It gives us a lot of draw. The reality chip, not much to say. Artifact lets us cast off top. Falls off if someone board wipes and it's equipped. It's really good. Treasure map was one that one of you guys recommended to me. I can't remember who. I normally can throw out CV, and that's normally correct because he recommends a ton of awesome cards. It's cheap. It fixes your draws. It spits out a ton of treasures when it flips, and then it draws you cards for treasures as a land on the back. 
It's great. It's it's honestly like super good. We've got OG Rashmi Eternity Crafter because like it's just good. It does it kind of the same thing our Rashmi does, except like flipped. It does it to us and it does it on everyone's turn. A call pakal. Don't I did not cast a spell on you, so like don't worry. It's just a really good card. Again, one of you guys recommended it to me. And like this chick just fing <laughs> like whoo, she's really good. At the end of each turn, okay. If an artifact entered on our turn, on our side, we get to look at our top two, put one in the grave, one in our hand. Huh? We just get really good card draw and card fixing for artifacts entering? I think we could probably do that. Honestly, with this list, I think it's that's a doable thing. Speaking of the Thunder Junction pre-release, we pulled loot. Look at him. He's just cool, man. I like him a lot, and he's cute. He lets us impulse draw at the beginning of our turns for the amount of permanent types we have that are non-lands. We have a good 15 enchantments, tons of creatures, tons of artifacts. Really good. Don't let DJ Khaled find this card, okay? He's too precious to be invited to one of those ditty parties, okay? Look at him, okay? I know he's all into keys and shit, but not this one, okay? This is ours. We also run Ponder, Preordain, and Opt with Rashmi's uh, trigger happening on the first spell we cast. If we don't happen to have enough artifacts to cast the spell we hit for free, uh, playing a one drop like Ponder or Preordain as our first spell for turn leaves us a lot of extra mana open so we could just hard cast the spell. Let's talk about board wipes. Ixodron, Blasphemous Act, Vandal Blast. You got it? Cool. Let's get into the fun stuff. This deck's number one thing. Keep this in your mind, okay? If you're building your own Rashmi deck, if you want to build this list and pilot it, um, you're trying to make as many artifacts and flood your board with artifacts as fast as possible. So I thought, you know, best first place outside of basics to get into is the add artifacts section. Um, which is just cool. Let's get into it. Now in these sections coming up, I am going to be breaking down all these cards. I want to be nerding about, I'm going to be nerding out over these cards. Okay. So again, if you want to, if you want to use the timeline, go for it. Up first is our tier, our, 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 our Material Alchemy. First try. For two and a red, this red enchantment gives us a blood token for each opponent we have, which in Commander is going to be probably three blood tokens. Uh, that's three artifacts in play, plus an enchantment if you've got loot in play. Not bad. Uh, it also turns all of our blood tokens into equipments. For two, you can equip to a creature and give it plus two, plus oh. It does a lot. It gives us three artifacts. It gives us an enchantment on board. It gives us card fixing if we want to crack those blood tokens. It gives us buff. If, it gives us buffs if we want to equip those equipments to our creatures. It's pretty great, honestly. I really like this card. At Sushi the Blazing Sky, maybe not going to nerd out over it as much. Really love the card. It's just straightforward how cool it is, though, and how good it is. It's a four drop. It's trample. It's flying. It gives you treasures when it dies, or it draws you cards when it dies. Impulse draw, but still, uh, in this deck. Just good. Like it a lot. Captain Landry Storm, like, eludes me, dude. I don't... Every time I look at this card, I'm like, you could be an uncommon. You're not that good. And then I play with it. And I'm like, you're really good. It's so strange. It plays very well. It's really good. It's an early game thing. It comes in, it beats people, especially in a four player format when you have three opponents to choose from. There's probably going to be one deck that's like a spell slinger deck or a deck that doesn't mind being swung at. So you can just milk that person. <laughs> Pause for some treasures. Not bad. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Say that three times fast. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Chrome Host Seed Shark. Give me something else. Give me something harder. This is another one you guys recommended, uh, and it took me forever to realize it was a creature because it reads so much like an enchantment. Uh, like, a very good creature, too. If I if I drafted this or, like, sealed evented this, oh, good lord. It's two and a blue for a 2-4 flying, and then whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we get to incubate X equal to that spell's mana cost. All of our non-creature spells turn into an artifact token in play that we can then animate later as a threat. Don't know how this one went over my radar. Like, super good shout out. And if you're wondering where they're shouting out all this stuff at, it's uh, over on the Discord. If you guys want to join, please feel free. It's in the description. It's open to everybody. You know how it goes. Anyway. Jolene the Plunder Queen. You plundering ass bitch. I'm in. She's really good. She's a four drop. She makes it so whenever a player attacks one of our opponents, that player gets a treasure. 
And if we get a treasure, we get that many treasures plus an additional treasure. She floods the board like quick, and she also promotes people not attacking us. She's also really fun to play because everybody starts singing Dolly Parton at the table, and it's just a good time. Storm killed Arnest. I think this one's probably in rotation enough in everyone's play group to not have to explain it too much. It turns all my instants and sorceries into treasures. Uh, you may ask yourself when you look at the deck list, uh, you only run 11 instants and sorceries. That doesn't seem like enough to justify running the storm kill. It seems like it, but it plays fine. It, it ends up making us like four or five treasures over the course of the game, which is good. Uh, it also gets plus one plus oh for each treasure or for each artifact we control. So it gets fairly big. And we also have Kazool's Ray or Kazool's Fury, the land, the flip land that flings, uh, which actually interacts really good with it. So it actually plays really good in the deck and I like it and I like it in here, dude. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, Stryonic Resonator. This is one that's like my favorite. It's so funny. I love this card so much that I gave like all of my friends a copy of it and I don't have a copy of Stryonic Resonator at the moment, which is hilarious. It's a cheap artifact, which in Rashmi is just always good. Uh, and you can pay two and copy a triggered ability, which in Rashmi is really good. So Paragon took. What did you take? I'm not sure. I, I'm going to, I'm going to guess some people's food by how the card reads. He's really good. Whenever we make tokens, we get to make those tokens plus an additional food token. Jeez. Floods the board with tokens very quick, very early. If we need to gain life, we can. We got the Urza. I'm pumped. I've been waiting for this thing to drop below like 10 bucks. It dropped to 11 bucks and it, it activated my neuron and I was like, that's close enough. He's really good. A four drop. He makes a construct when he comes out. He makes all of our artifacts able to tap for a blue. With Rashmi, we're going to be playing some big stuff off top if we hit it. I'll tell you that much. Uh, he also lets us scratch a lottery ticket. We love scratching lottery tickets. Too strong, too fun to not include. Also got the cool art. I, some people don't like this art, I guess. Again, I'm going to bring up the uh, the old Thunder Junction pre-release we went to. Uh, super fun. Pulled a bunch of stuff that was really good for this deck. Uh, this won't be the last time I bring it up. But this will be the last time I bring it up in the Add Artifacts section. We've got World walker helm i thought it was world waker helm i got excited world walker helm it's all good again kind of like paragon took except cranked to like 12. whenever we make artifact tokens we get an additional map token in, in addition if you don't know what a map token is i don't blame you they're kind of like niche tokens uh you can crack them to make target creature explore uh and then what else does it do oh lord um i almost puked in my mouth one in a blue to tap it make a token of another artifact token you have <sighs> I'll take another one of those Urza Constructs, and then another one of those Urza Constructs, and then another one of those Urza Constructs. Hello. Uh-huh. Yeah, I should be able to do that. Yep. Not a problem. Make that five Urza Construct tokens. This thing's nuts. It is such a good card. Adrix and Nev. Insane. It has ward, it protects itself, uh, and it doubles our token output. You can see how, like, you can cherry pick pretty much two cards out of this entire section of add artifacts, and it goes insane together. It, it's like an oiled machine. Is it well oiled? <laughs> you tell me. It just cuts to a complete shot of me, no clothes, slicked up like a baby. That'd be rough stuff, dude. This is a small section. It's called Peak. I don't know what else to call it. Um, it's cards that will let me know what's on the top of people's libraries because that's really good with Rashmi. The Lock Whale and the Counterspell we talked about, Memory Lapse, I think is what it's called. Um, both put stuff on top. Counterspells that put the spell on top. Then we can hit them with Rashmi with her trigger. It's really, really good. Also got one other card that does stuff like this, so I guess this is where I'm going to throw that in. Uh, Lantern of Insight. We got the cool foily version it's from a really cool set. It's a one-drop artifact. Like we said, Rashmi loves one-drop artifacts. Makes everybody play with the top card of their library revealed. Rashmi loves that. Now we can pick whoever has the best thing on top and just steal it. All right. We're getting to the part where you all skipped on the timeline. I get it. The win cons. Let's get into how the deck wins, what we're doing. Uh, I guess we'll just go down the list. First, we got Hellkite Tyrant. It's a big, scary dragon. It's from old school Commander, and I kind of have a sweet spot for it. If we control 20 or more artifacts on our upkeep, we win. Not that hard to do in this deck. But ain't that the way of a casual win con, huh? Emoti is a weird one that unexpectedly, like, wins a ton of games. I guess not unexpectedly. You just, like, throw it in and then you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Gives all our stuff that costs 6 CMC or more cascade. 
uh, which when we're ripping off the top of everyone's deck with Ra uh, with Rashmi and Ragavan, maybe we have a Lantern of Insight in play. We can pretty much always be picking six CMC or higher if it's an option, and then we get to be cascading off our own deck while we're stealing stuff, chaining into more artifacts so we can cast even bigger things if we hit it. It goes really well. I like it. Bruticlad was another one. We were actually, uh, there was a live stream we did where we were looking for win cons for this deck. One of you guys recommended Bruticlad. Um, super good recommendation. I'm pretty sure it won me a game the other night. Uh, it makes a 2-1 mirror on our combat, and then it turns all of our tokens into a copy of another token we control. So we can turn all of our treasures, clues, bloods, foods into 2-1 mirrors. We can turn them into the Urza's Construct tokens. That's like a... Yeah. Yeah, we already did this bit. And then you just bash face. It's really good. Kappa Cannoneer might be my favorite card in the deck, if I'm being honest. It, it's definitely my favorite win con. It's a giant turtle with ward like four, I think. Let me make sure I'm getting that right because it's such a ridiculous number. Yeah, ward four. Uh, and whenever we have an artifact enter, it gets a 1-1 one -one counter and it's unblockable until end of turn. This thing gets insane. Again, you pair any of those two from the add artifacts list with this card. Like you can win games fairly easily and i love turtles and finally we've got another thunder junction bomb and it uh, this easily is the second favorite card in the deck easily might be my favorite card in the deck and the other one's my favorite win con explain that one to yourself i know it makes no sense it's my brain we got breaches the blast maker and tell me this literally isn't made for this deck specifically okay whenever we cast our second spell <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Stealing. Stealing something with Rashmi. Sorry, that's something in my throat. We may sacrifice an artifact. Oh, the treasure. <clears throat> the treasure we get from Rashmi. Jeez. That is, uh, we may flip a coin. If we win the flip, copy that second spell we just cast. We just get to copy the stuff we're stealing with Rashmi if we win. Okay. If we lose the flip, you may deal damage equal to the CMC of that card to any target. We still get to steal the thing and then just fireball someone for its CMC. <sighs> Man, losing the flip sucks. It's the oh, 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 oh. it is insane. He's so good. He's actually like perfectly made for this deck. He might be the MVP card in this deck. You know what? He is. We're putting it on him. Right there. Gut reaction. He's the MVP card of this deck. He's made for this deck. He wins games. He's like cheaply costed. Comes out right before Rashmi and Ragavan do. He's also a little monkey goblin. He's just good, man. Feels illegal to play this guy. You know what I mean? Cuff me, dude. I'd be on that. What are the charges? Enjoying a magic card? Enjoying a succulent magic card? Yeah. Yeah. I bet, bud. If you're interested in running this deck or building a deck similar, uh, deck list is down below. Link. Um, go check it out so you can get an in-depth look. Also, here's all the nerd shit. If you guys are into that, like CMCs, test your hands. Test your hands. Uh, you know, if you're into that stuff, check it out. It's over there. Discord's open to everybody. If you want to show a little additional support to the channel, you can head over to Patreon. It starts as low as a dollar. Be sure to check out some of the latest content as well. We've been doing some more IRL stuff. Um, been putting in a lot of work, getting outside of my comfort zone. So if I could get some support, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, guys, much love and go play some magic.